increase. Right. I would like to welcome everyone here today for joining us for our environmental justice element stakeholders meeting. Uh, as Todd mentioned, yeah. this is our fourth year hosting our annual stakeholders meeting. Um, and we hope everyone was able to join this meeting without any problem. But if you do have any problem during the meeting, uh, please the uh, um, questions and answers feature. Um, and staff will assist you as best as we can. So today I'm joined uh, by our new planning and environmental review director, Todd Smith. Uh, we are very lucky to have a planning director who has been deeply involved in the EJ element. Along with Todd, we also have our senior planner, Leanne Mueller, uh, who specializes in housing related item in our county. Um, and importantly, uh, Christy has also been involved with uh, um, a lot of um, outreach as well. Um, in addition, we also have Todd Taylor, who's a senior planner, who will be um, assisting with our meeting today. For our meeting tonight, uh, we will start uh, with a background and brief history of our EJ element, and then we'll do, uh, um, uh, and then we'll um, share some of our accomplishment of this year, and uh, we'll have some questions and answer session. Um, and then at the end, we'll share what our next steps are uh, for our EJ element. So the purpose of this meeting is to provide um, you with our brief history of our EJ element and the implementation accomplishment of our 2022. Um, this year, we're doing a little bit different. Uh, we are utilizing our survey monkey to gauge the importance of various topics in our EJ element. So if you haven't taken the survey, we'll have the QR code at the end of this. Um, but if you have any email, um, questions or anything, you can always email us and inf envjustice at setcounty.com. So I wanted to start with just defining what our, uh, how um, our state defines environmental justice. So um, one of the key um, element that started EJ element for the county was uh, through the SB 1000, that was environmental justice and local land use planning that was passed by our state legislator. Um, they defined the environmental justice fair treatment of all people of all races, cultures, and incomes with respect to the development, ad adaptation, implementation, and, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. And I want to share uh, the purpose of the county's EJ element, uh, which is to address public health risk um, and environmental justice concern. Um, and I wanted to also share that our county has elected to emphasize the importance of the environmental justice by preparing a separate, a standalone document um, that has same weight as any other mandatory element of the county's general plan. So there were two phases to the development of our EJ element. During phase one, staff conducted baseline research, scoped existing policies, and prepared goals of EJ element with two sets of objectives, policies, and implementation measure. Um, and during this time, we have also established four EJ communities, as you can see on this map. For phase two, um, staff built on um, the efforts of the phase one by conducting in-depth public outreach, conducting additional baseline research, and developing new policies and implementation measures that augment or strengthen our existing EJ-related policies. For seven different topical areas, um, and just want to share the the bolded items are state mandated item, but the county had decided to add two additional items. So, pollution exposure and air quality, access to public facilities, food access, safe and sanitary homes, promotion of physical activity, um, and as a county, we have decided to add promotion of civic engagement and crime prevention as an additional topical item in our EJ. So moving on, we'll be discussing some of the implementation priority criteria that we have been implementing to um, 
organize the importance of the implementation within the EJ element. So we use three criteria to prioritize um, our implementation priority. Uh, first is that we'll institutionalize environmental justice as part of the county's regular business practice. And second, if it's already funded or have any uh, staffing commitment. And third, if it provides any co-benefits across other related community issues and county priority. Um, so I'll be going over some of the this year's implementation in the August that we've made. Um, so the first item is our active transportation plan. Uh, this plan was adopted on October 2022. And um, this document is a guiding document for achieving a direct, safe, and convenient bikeways and walkways. And it's has um, a lot of the implementation of the ATP prioritizes environmental justice communities. A second item that uh, we've had uh, been working on is our Stockton Boulevard study. So we have been continuing our work to do um, infill uh, study on this route. Um, and this is important as this is one of our EJ community covering some Sacramento area. And we hope that um, some of these feasibility study could kickstart um, some development within this area. And we've been also working on our reason program and affordable housing ordinance update. Uh, for our reason program, uh, like our first round of work, so we've attended all of our CPAC to hear about the reason. And right now, we're gathering some of the um, comments that we gather from CPAC and other comments, and we're doing additional outreach to some of the uh, property owners that may be impacted through. And for our affordable housing ordinance update, we are continuing looking into the scope of this ordinance update. Um, one of the key element that we're trying to look for is how to reduce the impediments to our housing production within our um, affordable housing ordinance update. And continuing down the list, uh, we have presented our climate action plan to both uh, Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors. Um, we have uh, the Board of Supervisors directed to receive additional comment and additional um, response to comment. And um, they will be now presented to the board in early 2023. And one of the things that um, our CAP um, does is that it, a lot of the programs within CAP prioritizes funding um, and other programs within the EJ area. Uh, we have been also work on continuing to work with our public information officer. So this year we have increased our social media uh, presence using our Facebook and next door using different communities. Uh, we have also utilized various email lists through um, our county communications through IP. Um, our department has also renewed our on-call contract with multiple translation interpretive services, and we do offer those um, as requested as well. Um, and internally, we have been also doing our training. So we have also been doing internal training to our our, our treatment for all of our classes and what EJ learning is and how we can implement in our day to day business. And second, uh, in the second list, uh, we also have our stakeholder meeting, uh, which you are all part of today. Uh, so we'll be continuing to hold this meeting um, throughout the year, and we also have the survey as I mentioned earlier. So throughout this meeting and through the survey, uh, we will include our EJ report card to the annual report to our Board of Supervisor in early uh, spring of next year. So, um, those were the lists that we had um, prioritized last year, but there were some other accomplishments that uh, we have worked on just throughout the year. Um, so some of the things that we've been helping is assisting um, other agencies or other departments on any grant application that helps our EJ community. So uh, this year we've uh, supported SMUD's grant work to install a different charters in the form of family housing. Those were multifamily um, housing were all within the EJ communities. 
Uh, we've also seen additional public facilities within our Egypt community. So there, uh, we have new funding for a new, uh, new library in our North Vineyard. Um, and we've also seen a lot of road and crossing improvements in um, all of our EJ community as well. So other thing is uh, we've also participated in our um, study to review our North Art Quarter for additional infill development in the area. Uh, and um, this we hope it would be uh, from the study, we hope that we'll find some um, recommendation that could help us uh, to develop uh, North Watt Avenue in our North Highland community. And uh, we have been continuing doing our COVID-19 outreach on our EJ community from both environmental um, department and public health. Um, Re-Envision West Art and Arcade, uh, which is another uh, long vision and planning document um, in our West Art and Arcade was also approved by our board uh, earlier this year in February. Our Department of Transportation is looking into a new project um, in Northwell Avenue to reimagine, to look at uh, another uh, long-term visioning um, project. And um, well, we are seeing a lot of sidewalk improvements through ARPA funding. Um, but I think most importantly, we are seeing a lot more recognition of EJ communities and EJ element from our county departments and other agencies. So while we um, are a lot of our um, implementation, um, there are definitely a lot of improvement that we could do. And two of the thing is to continue to work on executive level working group. Um, uh, we need to form and elevate the importance of our EJ element to all of our executives um, in the county. And we would like to highlight additional need and funding for EJ communities uh, through that meeting. And we are open to train, uh, open to provide environmental justice training to other departments as needed. Um, second thing that we need improvement is to work on additional outreach strategy. Um, I think uh, what we need is to, we want to hear from our community. Again, we want to uh, develop a framework that our department or other department could use to utilize um, community outreach tools. So with that, uh, we do have some preliminary recommended priorities for our next year. Um, as you could tell, some of these items are spillovers from last year. Um, so I think it's important to mention that uh, we continue to work the executive level working group as well as to develop outreach strategy. Uh, we believe that these are the both big foundation in our EJ element. Uh, we believe that we need to continue uh, to elevate our EJ principles within our executive level um, working group to make sure that um, our, all of our EJ element is being heard through all of our depart all of other departments in the county, not just the planning department. And second thing is um, to develop our outreach strategy. Um, it's important to have a framework that any part that any department could use. Um, so we would like to uh, do more best research practices, um, increase funding for multilingual services, and um, additional usage for social media to develop the new ways for any citizens to communicate with the county. Uh, third item is to continue our 2022 priorities, so which includes our climate action plan, our rezone program, and the affordable housing program updates. Uh, we are continuing to work on these items, and we hope that we could finish uh, at least a uh, majority of this item as well. Now, uh, the fourth thing is uh, we're looking to hear from um, our community of what other priorities should be for this year. So um, as I mentioned, the survey is open until December 16th. So make sure it's going to be available at the end of our presentation. Um, but we're looking to review the survey results from our community members um, to review uh, the survey results and your feedback. And from that, uh, we will work with our county leadership to develop additional priority for this year. So now uh, we'll take any questions um, regarding to any history of our EJ elements, um, any ideas that you may have. Um, 
for again, we could utilize a QA feature that you could see on the bottom of your Zoom screen. And we'll start answering them in just a minute. Um, oh, I do see Brenda. Uh, yes, Brenda, the party survey is still open and it'll be still open until December 16th. Um, one of the reason we're uh, extending these is that we want to hear from as many people as possible. And, and this time we're utilizing a separate uh, survey feature so that we could share with uh, more residents as well. Uh, I see about West uh, Envision, re Envision West Arden Arcade. Uh, there is a link uh, that Christy has sent out. Yeah, I, I went ahead and posted uh, that in the question and answers. And just to kind of do a real quick uh, high level of the project, it was a visioning document. So uh, during 2020 and 2021, um, we went out through the community and connected with the school district and park districts and a couple different other groups. Um, and it is um, trying to understand how we can make that community um, a, an area that can be more walkable, rollable, uh, movable for people other than uh, just the vehicles. Um, and so, um, again, it's just a visioning document. So it helps the county understand what is needed and wanted in the um, the community. And it will be used for moving forward on any future grants um, that the county works on. So, for example, there is another grant that the Department of Transportation is currently working on. And um, it's on Arden Way. And they are using the responses and this visioning document to help guide um, how that goes about. So I can actually, um, there is a um, community meeting for the Arden uh, Way um, master plan from DOT, and I can post that on here as well if I can find it really quick. So just a quick overview of what that project is, but feel free to check out the website. And if you have any questions, send me an email. I have a, a clarifying question for uh, Tim Irvine. Your question was, what are the major deadlines and dates we should put on our calendar for the next updates? Uh, with respect to the um, uh, EJ element, one of the things that we do uh, every year uh, after this stakeholder meeting and after the conclusion of the survey, um, once we get all the information and feedback from the communities, we um, compile that into an annual report uh, and that'll go into uh, something that we present to the Board of Supervisors, typically in March of every year. Um, and the second thing that you probably want to track as it relates to environmental justice implementation, one of the things that Young mentioned was uh, the county's climate action plan. Uh, there are a number of programs, uh, as Young mentioned, in that draft plan that uh, emphasize and prioritize uh, things like uh, energy efficiency upgrades, electrification, uh, EV charging infrastructure, uh, and, and um, you know, stations, um, uh, mobility hubs, for example, in environmental justice communities uh, as a, a one mechanism uh, of many to reduce the county's greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we don't have a, a firm date yet of when that's going back to the Board of Supervisors, but we are actively working on it and hope to get it in front of the board for adoption uh, early in, in uh, 2023. Um, there is a separate web page. I'll put it in the, um, as a response to this question, uh, I'll put it in there for the county's climate action plan. Um, one other question I see in the chat from Herman Barahona. Uh, good question there regarding what are the plans for tree planting in EJ communities. So one of the, the measures in the county's climate action plan is to continue our partnership with the Sacramento Tree Foundation. Uh, they've been great stewards of, of trees, not just in the county or the city of Sacramento, but in the region. Um, and we've got a great working relationship with them. Uh, one of the measures in the cap calls for increasing 
tree planting in uh, environmental justice communities, uh, in, specifically in locations that are uh, under canopy, uh, which we um, know the SAC Tree Foundation has a lot of data around that. Uh, and certainly we can see that as we go uh, through those communities on a regular basis. Um, I want to touch on Brenda's, Brenda Ruiz question regarding the uh, forthcoming conclusion of the food system assessment. So just for everybody's background, one of the EJ element policies was the development of a food system assessment countywide. And um, Sacramento County is fortunate to have the uh, the brain power in SAC Food Policy Council and all the partners who are putting together that uh, that effort. Um, that's wrapping up in the next couple of weeks. Thanks, Brenda, for all you and your team's work on that. Um, I think we would like to use whatever feedback you have as, as it relates to that uh, with development of the food action plan, whether that's a 2023 effort or a multi-year effort. I think that's to be determined at this point. And I could add a little bit more to Brenda um, uh, if on the portion, if it will be added to our 2023 priorities um, for the next phase, uh, it most likely will be um, following our kind of survey result. We um, at least I could see the survey result right now, but food um, action plan is one of the uh, higher item that we're seeing. So uh, we do think it'll be prioritized next year. And yes, we will be working on the next phase of our food action plan as well. Um, and Rich had a question about uh, which language are supported by our current contract. Um, Leanne mentioned that Spanish, Tagalog, uh, Vietnamese, Mandarin, Arabic um, are one of the more uh, requested services. However, through multiple services, we could offer um, most languages um, as long as we have some notice ahead. I want to chime in on another one of the questions, which is, is it possible for the county to work with San Juan Unified School District to plant oak trees or groves on the lands where old schools used to be? I'd say, uh, yes, it's possible. And just to provide a little bit of context there, historically, uh, county staff would try to identify uh, appropriate planting locations for native oak trees uh, throughout those communities where there have been trees lost to development. And we would love to honestly hear from either school districts or park districts or other public entities, uh, not just San Juan Unified, but uh, that's a good example um, of, of other appropriate planting locations that they may want to uh, find homes for some native oaks. So if you, uh, any of you in those, your respective communities know of any potential planting locations, we always like to hear that. I also want to, there's been a couple of questions or, or comments about languages and interpretation. Um, I'm going to be, I'm trying to find our, our various contracts. I think we've got about a dozen of them that uh, for on-call or, or uh, written document translation services. I know there's many, many languages spoken throughout the county um, and absolutely right. Uh, Kathy Strickland, one of the largest communities in West Arden Arcade is the Afghan population. We're very much aware of that. And um, as soon as I, we can find those uh, languages, um, we'll put them in the chat. Um, Pashto, which is uh, the language that Afghanis speak the most, is uh, on the R contract list and have requested those services to our contractors before. So I definitely know that we do have translation um, capacity for um, Pashto.
Uh, Herman uh, Bahona had a question about quantifying greenhouse gas, the PM2 point uh, reduction in EJ area. Um, I don't have that detailed information. However, um, I know last year we had supported one um, uh, a, a grant to install air pollution monitoring on our EJ area. Um, and I will double check if that um, considers the two point, uh, particle matter 2.5. 2 um, however, um, we are working with other agencies to install additional air quality monitoring in our EJ element. And that is actually part of our um, element as well. So I will get back to you on that. I would just add one thing on that particular question. Um, the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District uh, that's a mouthful, uh, has what's called a community air um, protection program, and they have been working in the South Sacramento environmental justice community for, um, gosh, at least a year, if not more. Uh, they've got a whole uh, portion of their website dedicated to it, and they have a number of monitors uh, installed, community air um, uh, monitors installed in that community. Um, you could probably track down that website page and send it in response to that question. Uh, Michelle had a question about tree planting, but specifically about supporting a tree maintenance. Uh, we'll work with our partner agency and see if there are any grant opportunities for tree maintenance, such as uh, tree prunings, or even helping with some of the diseased trees as well. I do see uh, one, one other comment related to RT uh, and, and bus routes. Um, I do want to know folks to know that although the county uh, as an entity doesn't control uh, RT, uh, they have a separate board. Um, there are members of the county's board of supervisors that sit on the RT regional transit board of directors. And so we often uh, as staff hear about these types of concerns, whether it's bus routes or uh, frequency of, of transit service in certain communities, and we can pass along that information. Uh, in this case, it looks like there's been a closure of a bus route on Edison Road, um, and we can certainly pass along the, the community's interest in, in a bus route for that particular location to RT staff. Uh, we all know that transit is one of the ways that um, it's, folks can uh, reduce their vehicle miles traveled and, and therefore their um, vehicular emissions, which is a, a component of air quality and climate change. So thanks for that comment, Kathy, as well. So some of the questions that we're not able to give you answers um, after the meeting, we'll post some of the um, commonly asked questions today and answers on a separate list along with this uh, presentation, um, as well as our uh, link to the live recording. I see one. Um, sorry, folks, we're just, we're, we're just kind of scrolling through all the questions. Lots of good ones here. Um, I think Tim Irvine, Timothy Irvine had a question about big ticket items for climate change. 
uh, adaptation and resilience, um, uh, which are you know, electrification of transit options and of household or business appliances. And the question is, um, can you report on, out on progress of identifying ways to fund more uh, electric public transit, which would be buses, not just you know EV charging stations and electric uh, household appliances, so HVAC, ovens, other appliances, and small businesses and households. So I, I definitely want to acknowledge that one. That is a, a one that we are tracking, not just planning and environmental review staff, but the county has a sustainability manager, um, John Lundgren, who is actively engaged in tracking uh, these types of issues, uh, and he, before he got his, into his current position, he worked in planning and environmental review in developing the EJ element and portions of the climate action plan. So he's very much aware of um, this issue that Tim is, is raising, and it's a legitimate one. I, I don't want to underemphasize it. We, we know there's some big ticket items there with electrification as well as electrifying transit. Um, so we're the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. We can be reporting out on progress of how we can find more funding. Staff is actively tracking um, the <clears throat> various federal uh, pieces of legislation as well as uh, statewide activities for potential funding sources that we can use to do some more implementation around this, as well as partnering with um, SACRT, uh, for example, on the EV transit options as well as charging facilities for those um we we'll call them big uh, public fleets so emma had asked about any updates for our healthy food or food access component of our eating element um so as todd and brenda uh, todd mentioned um brenda is working on our food action plan uh, which will guide our county about um, how healthy food will be distributed. And this plan really looks into not just from the farm to fork, but um, really the, the entire process from farm to um, the, uh, the how it gets transported and how it gets to our um, produce table. Um, so um, once that's done and that plan will be reviewed every five years, then that becomes our next plan, uh, next phase of, um, you know, making sure that it's working and making sure that the implementation within those plans is working. Um, and separately from our food action plan, um, there are some um, implementation measure that um, we have accomplished is uh, for some of the um, a liquor store markets or convenience store um, as a condition of approval, we are requesting and requiring about 10 to 15 percent to be dedicated for um, healthy food. So uh, those are being required as our use permit gets uh, either approved. Um, and we are also working with our public health department to ensure that um, our county residents have access to our food benefit systems. And we're looking into our, uh, we're working with our, um, um, the department to make sure that uh, we have um, also supporting additional um, food vouchers at uh, farmer's market as well. So Emma had asked about the, the food voucher at farmer's market. So we're working with various nonprofit to basically double their dollars at some of the farmer's market stand um, when they're using their um, EBT cards. Um, and that's dependent on um, also funding that our various uh, uh, nonprofits have and at the time of the year as well. Um, and we also have attendee asking us some of the ideas for increased outreach besides social media. Um, uh, we're, we're actually looking forward to hear from you about um, some of the ideas for better um, outreach. Um, so some of the outreach um, effort that we've done this time was to work with our um, kind of our 
um, are different agencies. Um, so we've emailed uh, basically almost every service and school districts to participate in our survey efforts and to attend these meetings. And we've also asked um, a lot of our community organizations to attend. Um, and another thing that we've done was that we had also asked um, uh, SHRA um, to send about our information through their um, residents. So some of those are some of the um, efforts that we've done is to do kind of focus outreach, but we are always looking for more ideas to increase our outreach effort as well. Okay, so with that, uh, we'll move into what our next steps are. So as I mentioned, um, our stakeholder survey will be open until December 16th. And once the results are in, we'll review and summarize our participants' feedback. Uh, we'll then work with our county leadership to develop recommendation for our work plan for 2023 and to determine additional uh, priority for our next year. And all these information will be presented um, in our annual report that will be presented to our board of supervisor. Um, and that is usually around March or April. So I do want to thank you for your time. However, um, we do have our survey that is open until December 16th. Um, please share with your neighbors or friends that live in our EJ area. And we do also have our email list where you can sign up. This is the best and fastest way to receive any type of updates. And I also do want to remind that this is not the only time where we look for your ideas or input. You could always email us at injustice at sacsaccounty.gov and we'll um, definitely take your input or any answer to any questions that you may have. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, this will be this was recorded and will be available on our county's environmental justice website, along with the, uh, this PowerPoint presentation. And we'll also have another um, document that answers some of your questions in detail. Uh, we did have one more question on Sam. Um, I, I, I mentioned that our uh, public health office worked with our nonprofit organization to identify the areas, and we always ask additional um, help from our nonprofit organization as well. So it's not the county doubling the dollar. We work with our nonprofits to offer those double the dollar at certain uh, farmers market locations. Okay. As I mentioned, uh, please take the survey, and if you have any questions, please give us an email, and we'll follow up with you as soon as we can. Well, I think that concludes our presentation tonight. We want to thank everybody for, for coming out uh, virtually anyway. Um, hoping to hear some follow-up questions. I know I've got a couple of follow-up items from a few of you. So thanks again for joining us and uh, have a good evening.